Alrighty, now I'm going to show you how to change valve springs without pulling a cylinder head off. Now I have a compression tester which I've modified. You can see right there. Basically the compression tester is unmodified but I cut a regular airline and uh, just hose clamped it to the uh, compression tester. So I got the um, <coughs> 150 PSI running in here and what that does is that's going to keep the valves up obviously as you see there's no push rods in right now um, now I've done one two three springs already and just so I don't get my rockers mixed up here this one's for this cylinder so that one's done so I'll set that in and then I'm going to leave this one out uh, to keep because uh, I need the room here so now I'm going to remove these two next that's the one on that side now it's important that your compression stay in that cylinder because if this uh, valve spring in the retainer is off you lose your compression in the cylinder your valve falls inside the cylinder and you know if you know there's a good chance you're going to be pulling your cylinder head off after that just to rescue your valve spring or your, uh, your valve. So I'm going to take these two rockers off get some room here. I've got this cheap power built or whatever it is tool from uh, part source and it's made to do valve springs on an engine without taking the cylinder heads off. These things don't work at all when they're brand new out of the package. You got to squeeze this part closed a little bit with a pair of pliers, you know, get it to your the seat size, the valve seat size. And then take a little piece of sheet metal and weld it onto the back to keep it from spreading open again. And then they got a little shitty C-clip uh, retainer and that little C-clip it gets on a little bit of an angle and it pops off and everything falls inside your engine. So if you ever get one of these right off the bat, weld that so that obviously it still spins like that, right? Weld it so it can't come off and then do your bend, weld a piece of sheet metal on there, it saves a huge bit of hassle. And this will do a job, uh, this will usually do about two engines and then you got to throw it out, uh, it just becomes unusable. But for you know, 15, 14 bucks I think they are, it's no big deal, so whatever. So you can't block up both sides of this though because you need to be able to get in here to do the uh, retainer clips. So you'll notice there's a long and a short arm, put your long arm in, oil dipstick's in my way, go figure. Spin it down. So you know you push the valve down or the uh, spring down. If you're watching there, then you take a magnet. Only use a magnet, please. <laughs> and remove the little retainers, just like that. And then spring pops right off and then just hold everything together in your hand like this and relieve the tension. And keep your retainer, we're using that on the new springs and you can pretty well discard of these. So here's a bit of comparison. There's the stock one, okay. There's the uh, aftermarket one. Okay, this is uh, part number comp cams 26986. And the reason why I'm using these is because they're excellent valves, they're recommended for the cam that we just installed. And the beauty thing is, the stock hardware works perfectly, as well as the uh, valve seal seats. Everything's a perfect fit, they're just a lot bigger and a lot stronger. Doing this will help us achieve higher RPMs. So now get get her all set up. You got to put it all together in your hand like this, basically, and set your retainer down inside, and then compress it while it's in your hand. Now these little feet here are going to get in the way of your valve or of your uh, valve seal, so you can just pull them out just a little bit. 
and then basically jam it with your finger so that you can get the thing over top. Once it's over top of the seat, you can let go, just like that, and continue cranking it down until your valve starts to pop out through the top of the retainer again. That looks about perfect there, and then you just take your factory retainer clips and set them inside. Wiggle it around, get it pushed around in the back, so that it's out of the way, and then you can put your second one in. Feel it clip in like that, and then just slowly relieve the, the tension on the valve, and the retainers will lock into place. And you gotta kind of wiggle that out. Simple as that. And just take a small body hammer like this, and then tap it into the correct position. And if you want, you can use a regular hammer, make sure it's clean, and just so you make so much noise because every time I smack it like that. You're just opening that valve a little bit, it helps the valve seat. You want to make sure that everything's sitting in there properly. And this one actually is still not sitting quite perfect. There we go. You hear that clip? That little pop that it made? Basically you just want to make sure all your valves are sitting 100% on the seats. Like they all are now. If they're not, you wear out the valve, you wear out the spring, you wear out the retainer clips, and you wear a mark, a wear mark in the cylinder head, and that's not good. So now that that's sitting properly, you just give it a tap, and then your upper seat's sitting perfectly. And then you just do the same process for all of them. So I'm going to carry on here.